Gary Lane here with me, and we're, uh, we're going to go through a video description of our SCBA emergency procedures drill. The way this drill is going to work, Gary is going to don his SCBA for time using the over the head method. We've talked before about the over the head method and the importance of using it because it gives you that intimate familiarity with all the straps and connections on your SCBA. What this does, wearing gloves the entire time, getting familiar with straps, positions, buckles, allows me to now translate that into more comfort in executing my emergency procedures. So, what's going to happen? When I call go, Gary's going to don his air pack for time. At that point, once he is fully encapsulated, hood up, um, helmet on, on air, he is going to go ahead and wait for me to begin giving him a series of directions. This is the way we teach our emergency procedures classes. We go through a very formulaic process to educate the student. Gary, you ready? All right. Time standard is 45 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Gary turns on his bottle and calls out his air pressure. Five. Air pack comes up over the head, straps come on. Waist strap comes on. You'll notice that Gary does not change much with his mask. Gary presets his mask. If you are fully comfortable with the use of your mask and understand that, totally acceptable. Gary's on the air right at the 45 second mark. If we were looking to drive this for an even faster time, we would do things like have him keep his chin strap already buckled, things like that. All right, Gary, so the next thing that we're going to do is go through our emergency procedures check. When we teach an emergency procedures check, we have the student take their left hand to their face piece. Their left hand goes directly to their face piece and feels down. That activates their bypass valve. As that left hand activates the bypass valve, now it follows that hose all the way back. At the same time, Gary's going to reach back with his right hand and make sure his cylinder valve is all the way on. In doing these things, he has cleared all the potential problem areas. He sweeps his face piece initially to make sure it's intact, checks his purge valve, makes sure his bottle's on. One of the reasons that we have him check his hose line all the way back is that very simply, I can pinch this line off and actually reduce airflow to the bottom. Okay, so by clearing that hose all the way back to my primary regulator, my first stage regulator, I ensure that I haven't gotten a pinch somewhere else along the line. So if we've done that process, the next thing that we're going to work on now is going through shifting our pack to get through a confined space reduced area. The way we teach shifting our pack is that we will always shift the pack to the left. Our regulator comes up on our left side, our purge valve comes up on our left side. That's where our air is always going to be. So Gary is now going to go ahead, lay down on his belly as though he's come upon an obstacle that he can't crawl through because of the height of his bottle. And he's going to go ahead and on the call of shift, he's going to shift his pack to the side. Go ahead and shift, Gary. The right shoulder strap gets completely loosened. The waist belt gets loosened up. His right arm comes out and he now lays flat on his belly. He's controlling his pack with his right arm without taking it out. He's able to maintain complete control. Now, if he has to dump that pack, that right arm can come out and he can take the pack completely out in front of him carrying all of his straps. Go ahead and take that pack fully out in front of me in the dump position here. Waist strap comes off. He maintains control with one hand at all times on the straps. Now, when we teach this process, we have this cylinder valve at the head of the firefighter, rather than pointed away. This does a couple of things. It allows us to use the battery ram end of the bottle 
to keep things safe and secure. It allows us to control our air. It keeps our pass device close. Now, to swim back into the bottle, all Gary has to do is pull that pack back alongside him. Go ahead and do that here. He can get that pack back along his side. Take his left arm in, roll his back onto the plate. And now, at his preference, can either reattach his waist strap or get his right shoulder strap repositioned. It's his preference at this time. What we can see is that by rolling, Gary is able to bring his straps up, find the proper positions, get things untangled if they've gotten twisted during the shifting and dumping process. Getting his right arm back in, he's able to begin reaffixing all of his straps. Making sure he doesn't have any twists or knots. This is important because if he clears an obstacle but then finds another one later, having twists and tangles is going to reduce his mobility over time. And he's back into his pack and good to go. When we talk about learning SCBA emergency procedures, these are the drills that we are going to go through. In person, when we teach these drills and are able to be hands-on, the next step in this evolutionary process is going through reestablishing your air supply after it has been cut off. What we'll do is go through that process when we're able to be hands-on with a firefighter and work them through that process. It's a much higher risk evolution than just simply going through these initial steps, but it's a critical one as we begin teaching stress inoculation training and begin teaching SCBA emergency procedures. Alright, so what we're going to do now is go through demonstrating a way of applying stress. Let's say we've had a significant period of time with our candidates where we've been able to have them do 30, 40, 50 good sets and reps of dotting and emergency procedures work. They're now fairly comfortable with where straps are, what they're supposed to be doing. We want to ratchet the intensity level up just a little bit. What we're trying to do is develop positive behaviors under stress. The only way to do that is to put the candidate into a stressful environment and then coach them through that moment. So what we're going to do now is show what that looks like. Shift your pack! Shift your pack! Shift your pack! Start to come back, and our ability to execute these tasks, tasks 
is increased. All right, Gary, swim back into your pack. The whole idea behind stress inoculation training is to train the candidate, train the firefighter to react positively under stress. Any instructor can create a stressful environment that is almost impossible to solve. That's not our goal. Our goal as instructors is to coach and mentor. All right, Gary, you're a little tangled up. Slow down. One step at a time. Get that pack settled. Get down on your belly. Get it where you need it to be. Chase the straps. Make sure everything's back where you want it to go. At this point in time, if all I'm doing is continuing to scream and fluster and frustrate, I'm not leaving here with a positive learning outcome. I don't want to create training scars. I want to use stress effectively to instruct the candidate so that they come out with a positive outcome. What that does is train them that under stress they can have positive results. All right, Derek, go through, make sure everything's good. Make sure all your straps are set, make sure nothing's twisted. Clean up any problems. What we don't do is jump in and solve the problem for the candidate. Gary's got a twisted strap here. I'm not going to come in and flip it back into position and fix it for him. I'm going to let him fix it himself. But I'm going to coach him through it if need be. Hey, Gary, there you go, pal. You got your hand on the strap. Go ahead and get that twist out of his shoulder strap so it sits nice and pretty. If you need to, you can slide your arm out to fix it, but otherwise just get it twisted nice and straight, get it tightened back up. All right, back up on your knees. All right, sit on up. Excellent job. What we do, we leave that student with a positive outcome. Anytime we attempt to use stress as a training tool, it has to be done incrementally. We can't merely put the pedal to the floor. All that's going to do is leave training scars and turn Gary off on high-intensity training for the future. However, if we apply a little stress and allow the student to adapt, then we can apply a little more stress, allow the student to adapt, until finally we're conducting some fairly significant emergency procedures drills in uh, SCBA maze with theater smoke, and then finally progressing to an uh, actual burn tower environment. These are all ways of improving the capacity for the firefighter to thrive on the fire ground under pressure.